This is KGW News at 11. A focus on the future of reproductive rights taken to the streets. This was the scene this afternoon in Portland. Local protesters joined tens of thousands of others across the country today to make their voices heard. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany Falkers. These marches have been planned for weeks. They come after the most restrictive abortion law in the country passed in Texas and before the Supreme Court takes up a case that will directly challenge Roe v. Wade. Women's March organized today's events from New York to San Francisco. Many worry that a mostly conservative majority on the high court will side in favor of a Mississippi law that bans abortions after 15 weeks. Well, some may see this issue as just politics for many women in it's an attack on their rights. Because this isn't about uh, this isn't about men. This is about women, and it's about men trying to control us. The head of the group March for Life called the theme of this year's Women's March macabre, saying, "Quote: What about the equal rights of unborn women?" Meanwhile, a rally today outside Providence Park had Portland Thorns FC fans calling out the club. It's just part of the continued fallout after a bombshell report accused a former head coach of sexual harassment and misconduct. We talked to an organizer of today's rally put on by some of the biggest supporters of the team. There were no Portland Thorns on the pitch at Providence Park Saturday. No fans in the stands either. Instead, they rallied outside in the wake of a sexual coercion scandal by a former head coach. At the end of the day, what we want to do is we, we really want to demand uh, answers um, and also show our players that we support them. The National Women's Soccer League called off its slate of games for the weekend after a report by The Athletic accused former Thorns head coach Paul Riley of sexual harassment and misconduct. So in place of a game, we're asking people to come to the stadium uh, so that we can have a rally, so that we can show the players that we support them and we can show the front office and leadership that we're, we're paying attention and we're demanding change. The investigation includes claims of sexual coercion stretching back more than a decade. U.S. Soccer suspended Riley's coaching license and he was fired by the North Carolina Courage. Riley told The Athletic the allegations against him are untrue. Riley was the head coach of the Thorns for two seasons in 2014 and 2015. He was dismissed by the team after an investigation uncovered, quote, clear violations of company policies. In a statement, the Thorns said, quote, the article is a difficult read and there are some horrifying revelations. We have grown since 2015 as an organization and will continue to seek to improve and get better. On Twitter, the team also thanked players Mona Shim and Sinead Farley for speaking out and apologized to them for the team's role in the abuse. Now, some of the Thorns' biggest supporters, the Rose City Riveters, are calling for action. Yeah, I'm, I'm as invested as I can be without owning a part of the team. Like, I've got, I've got them tattooed on my body. For Chair Gabby Rosas, the Thorns aren't just her team. This is her community. And that, she says, is a big reason for the rally. And we have to fix uh, what what's broken about the system. Um, and that's that's really, I think, what compelled us to put this rally together is to say, how do we bring our community out and and still have community? Portland Timbers players released a statement on Twitter Saturday offering their full support to Thorns and NWSL players. They called the allegations unacceptable and disgusting and commended the strength and courage it took to bring them to light. As for these fans, they're demanding more from the Portland Thorns front office and the NWSL. It really just is a call to action for our community to say this isn't who we, we want to be. This isn't who we thought we were. FIFA and U.S. Soccer have opened an investigation into the case against Riley, and the NWSL commissioner resigned. The league is also implementing a new anonymous reporting process and vowed all reports would be promptly investigated. Today, former Vice President Mike Pence made a visit to Washington County to meet with law enforcement and participate at a dinner and speech at the Reagan Day Dinner. The former Vice President made his first public appearance in the state since he and former President Donald Trump lost the 2020 election. It comes as rumors are growing that he could be getting ready for a 2024 presidential run. 
The former vice president discussed a great Republican comeback in the coming elections, discussed the legacy of Ronald Reagan and that impact on his life, and applauded Americans for their response to the pandemic. You know, I'll always be proud of how the American people responded to the coronavirus pandemic. My heart grieves for the, the loss of so many of our countrymen. And if there's someone within the sound of my voice or looking on who lost a loved one, know that you've always been in our hearts and in our prayers. Pence also spent a good portion of his speech talking about the accomplishments of the Trump administration and bashed the Democratic Party and the Biden administration. For the first time in a long time, the Rose Quarter was buzzing with activity today. The Blazers held their Fan Fest at the Moda Center, and the Winter Hawks played a home game with fans in the stands for the first time since the start of the pandemic. Art Edwards was there for all the action. Fans lined up early outside the Moda Center, ready to get inside for the team's Fan Fest event. It's been a while since something like this has been held at the Moda Center. Because of the pandemic, last year's Fan Fest didn't happen. This year, the fans are ready to get a look at their team. I'm really excited. I've got, as a matter of fact, I've got three tickets set up for, all, for three games already. It's just exciting to hear all the fans back all at the same time and to be able to see Dame and CJ to do the thing, it's even more fun to go back. Inside, it was a festive afternoon. The Blazers gave fans an inside look at what practice is like under new head coach Chauncey Billups. They did player introductions before the team scrimmage. On court, it was a chance for the players to get in front of their adoring fans. And for Billups, it was the first time that he was on the floor at the Moda Center when the fans were cheering for his team. I thought it was beautiful, man. You know, just to seeing, uh, seeing so many fans in there, I thought it was an awesome turnout. Ton of, ton of fans out there. I've done these things as a player forever. Um, if I've ever gotten a turnout like this. As the Blazers Fan Fest wound down, Portland Winterhawks fans began to gather outside Veterans Memorial Coliseum. They were on their way inside for the first game with fans in more than 500 days. And boy, were they ready. So excited, we can't believe it. We've been waiting a long time. Yeah, we're season ticket holders and have been for a really long time. So we can hardly wait. Fans went wild when the Winterhawks scored the first goal of the game. They couldn't hold on for the victory, but it was a great night in the Rose Quarter with fans back in both arenas. Art Edwards, KGW News. Oh, I love to see all that action happening in the city.